Welcome back to episode number six of NHL Deal or No Deal. You guys know the drill at this point. I make a post on the community tab like this. You guys do some mock trades in the comment section of the post. I go through them, pick some of the ones that I like most for a video, and talk about them in the video and say if it is a deal or no deal for me. And you guys crushed it on this post. Just five hours in is when I went on and looked through the comments to pick some for a video. And there was already 126 comments. So like I always say at the start of all these videos, it's super hard to get everyone involved i mean if i chose all 126 the video would be like three hours long so i usually only choose like eight to ten but there is going to be many more of these videos there's going to be agree or disagrees more deal or no deals so if your comment wasn't featured in today's video don't get too upset because there's going to be many more opportunities to get featured in a video and with that being said let's jump right into it with the first mock trade Starting off the video with a trade from That's Awesome who says to Florida, Nick Letty and a 2023rd round pick to the New York Islanders, Mike Hoffman. Now I like this, I think it's interesting and I know a lot of people are going to say no deal just because obviously Mike Hoffman is a better player than Nick Letty and New York Islanders would be getting the best player in this trade. But you know, with Mike Hoffman being on the final year of this up and coming season of his $5.9 million contract, he's most likely going to be getting a raise and I'm not quite sure if Florida is going to be willing to give him too significant of a race if they are really serious about getting Bobrovsky and Panarin in free agency this offseason. Also, Dadanov is entering the last year of his contract. He's going to need a raise, and with Nick Letty, you have more security. He has a lot more years left and makes, like, I believe, 5.5 mil, which, you know, only, like, 400,000 cheaper than Mike Hoffman, but when Mike Hoffman signs his new contract, that's probably going to be around, you know, one and a half to two million dollars cheaper than what Mike Hoffman does end up making, and Nick Letty, he's a very reliable top four defenseman, in my opinion. I think he would bring a lot of stability to that blue line, and if they were to end up getting Nick Letty, then you'd have a top four of Nick Letty, Keith Yandel, Mike Matheson, and Aaron Ekblad. That's a pretty talented top four defense to go along with an already really talented group of forwards and then if they get Bobrovsky in free agency this has a making of a team that's ready to jump into the playoffs and even potentially become a contender soon so many people might not agree with this but I'm actually going to say deal I like this trade a lot and I didn't even really talk about it from the Islanders side they'd be getting a fantastic forward you know to really bolster that top six scoring so I like this trade and I'm going to say deal from both sides this next trade comes from Aaron who says wild trades Jason Zucker to Edmonton for Jesse Pugliarvi, Caleb Jones, and a 2022nd round pick. It's no secret that Jesse Pugliarvi wants out of Edmonton, and I think there is a strong possibility that we do see that come to fruition this summer. And I'm not quite sure what teams will be willing to give up for a guy who they know wants out because you have some leverage there. You don't really have to throw the kitchen sink at Ken Holland just to be able to get him. And you know, we're not even really sure what Jesse Pugliarvi is going to turn out as an NHL player. Yes, maybe a change of scenery would really help him but you know you'd think playing with guys like dry settle and mcdavid would help him enough at the nhl level so you know i'm not quite sure what's there but for a team like minnesota who in my opinion is heading in the rebuilding direction i think that would be an amazing fit for jesse pulyarvi and then going the other way to edmonton you get that top six really talented winger that could play with Connor mcdavid and immediately i think jason zucker is a 35 to 40 goal scorer if he does end up playing with Connor mcdavid he just signed that lucrative contract after his first 30 goal season he's locked up for some decent term a little bit of money but you never know if he can really get back to what he was doing last year then that contract doesn't look too bad and like I said Minnesota getting two young guys in Pugliarvi and Caleb Jones who's a 22 year old defenseman who maybe he turns out to be something someday he was a former fourth round pick by the Oilers in 2015 and had 29 points with the American Hockey League Bakersfield Condor so you never know maybe you have something there and you know I'm quite confident that Jesse Pugliarvi can still turn out to be a solid NHL player so I like the trade you're getting a 2020 second round pick as well for a team like Minnesota that in my opinion should start rebuilding and getting younger and you know they kind of want to trade Jason Zucker it seems like they've been exploring that for a while so I love this trade for both sides I'm going to say deal to this one as well this next trade comes from Octane Rips who says the Ducks trade Cam Fowler to the halves for Andrew Shaw Jesse Ulanen and a 2020 second round pick I like this trade a lot for the Montreal Canadiens getting you know a top four defenseman who could quarterback a power play he's a great puck mover as well and he has showed that he has the capability of being a really solid two-way defenseman as well so you're beginning a guy that can help you win now and that's I think the direction Montreal is leaning towards and for him they'd be giving up Andrew Shaw who you know he's a big part of their team but I don't think he would be missed too too much you know especially if you're getting a guy like Cam Fowler in return but I'm not quite sure what the Ducks would want to do with Andrew Shaw because in my opinion they're heading in a rebuilding direction I'm not really sure where he would fit in their lineup but the big piece is Jesse Ulanen, a second round pick by the Canadian 
Canadians in the 2018 NHL draft. Had 27 points last year in the Liga. You know, as a 19 year old, that's pretty impressive and maybe you have a talented young winger there. Uh, but I'm not quite sure if the Anaheim Ducks would do this trade just because Yulinen isn't really the biggest name prospect and you know you're only getting a second round pick. But in my opinion, I like this trade. This is like already the third one I liked so far in this video. So I'm actually going to say deal to this one as well. I think it would be a really good move for both sides. This next trade is a really interesting one. It comes from Brandon who says Clarkson contract and Colin Miller to Vancouver for a sixth round pick. So basically Vancouver would be getting Colin Miller for free. They just have to take on that David Clarkson contract. Now Vancouver, it's been known that they want to upgrade that decor. They've been rumored to be really in on Tyler Myers this offseason. And I think Colin Miller would be a really, really good fit for them. But they would be getting on that David Clarkson contract and kind of take themselves out of play for a bigger name free agent this summer. But there is only one year left on that $5.25 million that David Clarkson makes. And, you know, Vegas get, needs to get that off right away. They're already over the cap. They need to unload some more money before the season starts. And I think Vancouver would be a good suitor to take that on for one year because I don't really think they're going to be spending that money anywhere else, you know, unless they are really in on a Panarin, which I never really think they were. And then getting a guy like Colin Miller who can play in their top four, you know, just about a year and a half ago, he was a 41 point defenseman for Vegas in the 2017-18 season. He is on a $3.875 million contract through the 2021-22 season, then will become a UFA. I don't really think that's too bad of a deal and that's more money that Vegas does need to get off the book so I actually like this trade a lot I'm gonna say deal to this one I know a lot of Canucks fans are gonna get mad at me for this in the comments but I don't think that money's really going to be going anywhere else over the next year so I think this is a pretty smart move I'm gonna say deal Next mock trade comes from Austin Bober who says Duran for Barry, straight up Tyson Barry for Jonathan Duran. And I actually like this trade a lot. You know, you guys are doing really good in this video. There hasn't really been any yet that I've said no deal to. And Jonathan Duran, I think there is still something there with him. He just had, you know, tied for the career high in points for him and was only a minus eight as opposed to a minus 28 the year prior. So I think he had a really solid year for Montreal. That five and a half million is still a little bit, but if he can get up to what I think he can be a consistent 60 point point score in this league then that 5.5 mil you know that's not too bad of a contract he makes that through the 2022-23 season and I think reuniting him with his junior teammate Nathan McKinnon in Colorado they dominated junior the Q together I think that would be a really smart move that could be one of the most lethal combos on the power play in the entire league so I really like the idea of that and then going back the other way to Montreal you're getting a defenseman who in my opinion is one of the more underrated offensive defensemen in this league can quarterback a power play and you know it would be leaving a hole in your top six forwards but that is what free agency is for especially if they get Matt Duchesne then I would like this trade that much more but honestly this is another one that I really do like a lot and I'm actually gonna say deal to this one as well I would just love the idea of seeing Jonathan Duran and Nathan McKinnon suiting up together in the NHL this next trade comes from Gensi Season who says Nashville trades Kyle Turris to Edmonton for Milan Lucic and a first in 2020. Now in my opinion this would be a really risky move for Edmonton trading away their first round pick when I don't really know if they're going to be a playoff team. I think that Nashville could be getting a very valuable first round pick there. But you know taking on that Milan Lucic contract you're probably going to have to throw in a top tier prospect or you know a first round pick. And coming back the other way would be Kyle Turris. It's known that he's probably going to be traded out of Nashville for a while now and I think he would be a pretty solid fit to Edmonton even though he is a center and they are in need of wingers I think you know having him as your third or potentially second line center if you move dry settle to the wing or what have you or whatever they decide to do there I think that they could make it work and he would be a pretty solid fit but the main part of this for Edmonton would be getting off that Milan Lucic contract and having some more flexibility in terms of the cap but you know in my opinion that first round pick I don't think it's worth it I think there would be other teams that are better suited to take on that contract and maybe you wouldn't have to give up that first first rounder maybe you give up a prospect instead so this is the first trade of the video that I'm going to say no deal to you know I like the kind of idea of it but again Edmonton needs wingers not centermen so I'm going to have to say no deal on this one Next up, we have another Jason Zucker trade, and this one comes from It's Awoke, who says Jake Vertanen, Louis Erickson, a second in 2020 for Jason Zucker and a fourth in 2020. He says, also love the vids. Keep it up. Thank you so much for your support, and thank you for the comment. This is a trade that I like the idea of it. Vancouver wants some help on the wing, even though they kind of already got it with JT Miller, who is a centerman, but will probably play the wing there in Vancouver. But if you get a guy like Jason Zucker as well, that would really fill out that top six very nicely. Uh, I'm not quite sure if they would be a fan of that con 
contract, but getting off the Louis Erickson money would definitely, you know, help them bring that on. And, you know, you would be giving up a younger player who, in my opinion, still has the potential to be a 20 goal scorer, be a really good power forward in this league in Jake Vertanen, and you're giving up a second, but that is the stuff you have to trade away if you want to get rid of a bad contract and especially get a decent player in return. And that's what Jason Zucker is. He can be a 30 goal scorer. He's already showed that. Uh, so I think that's not really enough if you're getting off the bad contract and getting a guy like Jason Zucker. So for Minnesota side, I think I'm going to say no deal on this one, but I really like the idea of it. And I think if there were some minor adjustments that it could work. The next trade comes from Tommy Heighton. And hopefully I'm saying that name correctly. I apologize if I'm not, but they say Jesse Pugliarvi straight up for Brett Pesci. And I'm not really sure what Jesse Pugliarvi's value even is at this point. Like I said earlier in the video, Edmonton kind of has to move him out because he's threatened to go play in Europe. So teams don't really or teams do have the leverage over Edmonton sorry Edmonton doesn't really have the leverage in the move and you know trading Jesse Pujarvi a prospect that wants out potentially looking like a bust for you and getting a really solid defenseman in Brett Pesci who's only 24 years old was a plus 35 last season with 29 points very underrated very solid defenseman I'm not quite sure if Carolina would want to give that up for a guy who you don't really know what he's going to turn out to be in the NHL so I think that's a little bit too much I'm going to say no deal on this one strictly because I just have no clue what Jesse Pugliarvi's value is right now and I'm a big fan of Brett Pesci and I think Carolina definitely wants to keep him around now finishing off the video with a Detroit mock trade these are always my favorites from psycho dad Jesse who says goes to Detroit for Trevor Daly and a 2020 first round pick um, this is a trade where I'm honestly gonna say no from Detroit's standpoint I would not be okay with us giving up our first round pick for next year especially considering that we could still be a basement team and that could potentially be a very valuable first round pick even though to get a guy like Shane Goss is where you have to give up a lot of value but still I honestly think we could be one of the worst teams in the league next year so I'm really not comfortable giving up that first round pick even though I love Ghost a lot I think he would look amazing in a Red Wings uniform that first round pick giving up that is a really too risky I don't want it to turn into like an Ottawa situation where they didn't have their top four pick this year so I'm gonna say no deal for this one but I definitely would like Ghost to be in Detroit so that is going to wrap up the video. I really hope you guys did enjoy. Thank you guys so much for all the support lately. I'm super pumped for this summer. I'm going to try to upload daily right until the start of next NHL season. Maybe some double uploads here and there. There is going to be a double upload today. So look out later on in the day for more of like a news and weekly roundup video uh, from all the news that happened this week. You guys really seem to like the one that I did last week. But yeah, thanks guys so much for the support lately. And like I said at the start, don't get upset if your comment wasn't featured in today's video. There's going to be many more of these agree or disagrees and stuff like that. Your comment will most likely be featured in an up and coming video so with that being said i hope you guys all enjoyed today's video if you did please make sure to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel for daily nhl content and i will see you guys all in the next video